Welcome to another episode of Design, Develop, Share. I'm David Anderson, and if you like the Kendo UI framework by Progress, formerly known as Telerk, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe because I like this framework quite a bit. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to take the observable object and we're gonna turn that into a view model base class. And the reason we're gonna do that is throughout all of their documentation, all of their examples, they use observable object which provides that publish subscriber change notification as the view models. The problem is if you're like me and you bu actually build real software, you need that to scale. That's kind of one of the value prospects of MVVM. And so you need things like inheritance. So I'm going to show you how to accomplish that today. We're going to start with their documentation example. So I've got a very bare bones web page here. We've got a basic view model that is an observable Kendo object. We've got their two fields, one and two, and we've got the document body bound to that view model. So if I load this page, we have a span tag with the data binding, uh, specifically a text binding, spitting out the value of field one, which is value one. So the solution to this problem is actually just a couple of lines of code, believe it or not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write that out. So the first thing we're going to do is actually going to declare a view model with a capital V. We're going to use that just to distinguish that it's a type we want to create rather than an instance value. We're going to then say kendo data observable object extend. Now keep in mind that the kendo framework is built on top of jQuery. So they're using to an extent jQuery extend under the hood. You can go look at GitHub. They have the source code. You can see how all that works. But what we're going to do is extend the observable objects. So we're basically, quote unquote, inheriting from it. There's no, uh, it's prototypal inheritance in JavaScript. So it's not like I come from C-sharp land where you just have class-based inheritance. We're going to declare an init function. So we're declaring a constructor with no constructor parameters. And what we're going to do is we're going to call the base class constructor, again, quote unquote, Kendo data observable object fn. They've aliased prototype as fn in the Kendo framework. We're going to say dot init dot call. Call is a function on the JavaScript prototype object. The first parameter is going to take the scope that we want to uh, use when calling the init function. We want that scope to be the current view model instance. The second parameter is the arguments that are required by the function that we're calling in this manner. That's going to be the observable object which requires the object in which we are extending again in this case going to be our view model instance what's going to happen under the hood at a very high level again go read the source code yourself but what's going to happen is they're going to copy all the functions and properties from the object being passed in onto the observable object that's created and combine them together and now you have a nice observable object with everything that you need the reason we need to do that is we still need the base class publish subscribe functionality that Kendo provides out of the box. So those four lines of code is all that's required to actually create the view model base class. So now we can move that up in our code here. And next we're going to actually change our view model to now extend, not create an instance of yet. We got to create our type. We're going to extend our view model. And we're going to do the same thing. Now this is a requirement that we must specify a constructor function. And we must again call the base class constructor and so on and so forth down the chain because we need that observable behavior. So what we're going to do is simply just say again, now view model, because we're at a different layer in the hierarchy, fn.init.call this. We do not require an extra parameter because our base class did not specify one. We just have to pass the scope. So now we have our definition of our view model with two fields. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our actual instance. We're going to change the name of this really quickly though to document, actually let's call it body view model with a capital B again to distinguish between our instance data and our types. So now we're going to create view model, lowercase v. Now we're going to say new. We're no longer extending. We've already created our types and defined those. Now we're going to create a new instance of the body view model. Again, no uh, constructor function parameters required. We're going to save that. We're going to refresh our page. 
Now you can see our value one is still there. Page is still data bound. So we have our view model wired up. Now I'm gonna show you how to enable inheritance. So you kind of should already see the point that we already have inheritance, but I'm gonna show you, take it one step further and show you how you can override base class functionality. So we're basically gonna say special body view model equals body view model dot extend. Again, same kind of syntax. We're gonna go ahead and copy our init function just to save ourselves some characters on the keyboard. We're gonna this time call body view model the init function for that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change field one to get value and we're gonna say base class value. We'll go ahead and get rid of field two because we just don't care about that for this example. We're gonna rewrite that function and actually this needs to be, sorry, this needs to be a function and we're going to return that string. When we redeclare the function in this manner, when the browser, the JavaScript engine evaluates which function it's going to call, it's going to discover our special body view model function first. That's going to be the one that gets called as far as the prototypal inheritance chain is concerned. So just by rewriting that there, we've already overridden the base class get value function. Now what we can do if we want to just call the base class behavior, we can simply return body view model fn dot get value dot call again specifying some scope. Let's actually update our binding. That's the kind of the next necessary part to get value. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that line of code now and instead we're going to return something different. We're going to say derived class value. So before we can run our page, we now need to update our view model definition down here to a special body view model. Now, if we refresh the page, we can see that now we have our derived class value. So right there, we've created a reusable base view model class. We've accomplished the ability to have inheritance, and we've done that with a very simple and easy syntax where you don't have to wire up all the prototype chains and things like that. So there you have it. That's what I wanted to show you how to do. You won't find that anywhere on the Kendo website. They do maybe talk about it in the forums, but it's kind of sparse and actually seeing an example of it, not so much. But if you cut like me, if you primarily have worked in an object oriented world and you're wanting that type of functionality in Kendo, it's completely possible. I've written thousands of lines of code in real software in production using this technique. It works. It scales. We've got lots of derived view model classes. We've got tons of code. It works really well. So there you have it, guys. Again, if you like the content, give this a like and a subscribe. I'm going to have many more videos to come regarding the Kendo UI for jQuery Framework, again, by Progress Telerik. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.